Hi everyone, it's Professor Rako here again. Today we are going to walk through an example of how to put together a balance sheet. Uh, so if you did the income statement example that I did uh, with the income statement videos, you'll see this is set up pretty much the same way where we have a list of accounts and then it just asks us to prepare the appropriate uh, financial statement. All right, so these are a common way that you'll see them asked sometimes in homework. Uh, and also possibly on a test or something like that. So one thing you need to do here, remember we're preparing a balance sheet. So you need to go through and eliminate anything that's not on the balance sheet. For example, all the income statement stuff. So sales revenue is not on there. Uh, cost of goods sold will not be included on the balance sheet. Uh, over here, selling expenses will not be on the balance sheet. Uh, interest expense will not be on the balance sheet. Uh, so those we can eliminate. And then if you notice here, retained earnings is not given, so we'll have to figure that out. All right, so a couple things to think about here. Another way that this can be asked is you give a trial balance, and you'll actually have to come up with, they'll give you like a beginning retained earnings right here instead of ending. And uh, you'll have to come up with net income and then do the retained earnings formula to get the ending retained earnings balance. So that's a little bit lengthy, uh, but it does is a way to combine both financial statements into one problem. So just kind of be aware of that. that that's a possibility that you might see in a homework or on a test as well. All right, so with any financial statement, remember you're always gonna have your heading up here. I just always omit the heading just for the sake of time, and I usually let my students do that. But once again, make sure you understand what your teacher expects out of you. All right, so let's start over here with our assets. All right, so typically, you know, if you look at the Home Depot example in the previous example, assets will be first, and then below that, liabilities and equity. For the sake of uh, space, I'm going to have to kind of do them side by side here, but that's fine as well. All right, so we have our assets section, and then remember, we have current assets. And then we'll just list those out. So we have cash, and that was 289000 We have accounts receivable, and it doesn't say that up there, but this would be the net amount. So I'll just put that in parentheses just so you remember that. Net amount meaning we'll net it against any allowance for doubtful accounts. And we'll see that coming up in uh, shortly uh, a few videos down the road when we get to accounts receivable. Uh, we had inventory. And that was given as uh, 45000 And then we had uh, our last one, and we had some prepaid rent. And that was 47000 All right, so remember, these are in the order of liquidity, all right, that meaning how quickly we're going to convert them into cash. So, the, uh, so we get our total here. So this will be our total current assets. And then I'm going to put this number over here. We're going to have a kind of a separate column where we're going to add up all of our totals. All right, so that gives us our current assets. All right, so next we're going to do our non-current section. All right, uh, so this is, uh, I'm just going to call it property, plant, and equipment. But you could also see it called non-current assets or long-term assets or something like that. All right, so we have land. And that was given as 100. We have uh, equipment. Now remember, any depreciable, remember land we don't depreciate, but equipment we do. So we're going to have equipment of 233. So remember, that is our historical cost. And then we are going to say, remember, the book value is cost less accumulated depreciation. The accumulated depreciation was 155. So remember, the net number or the book value, so that 78000 is the book value of the asset. Remember, that definition is historical costs, less accumulated depreciation. All right, so that's our fixed asset. So that takes care of all of our assets. So let's just go up here real quick, uh, back up to the problem, and let's just start checking off things that we've used so we can make sure we haven't left off any assets. We use cash. We use account street of bonds payables liability. Equipment and land, wages payable is a liability. We use accumulated appreciation and prepaid rent. Accounts payable is a liability. Stock is equity. We use inventory and then retained earnings is equity. So it looks like we're in good shape now to add up our assets. All right, so now uh, let's just take our uh, total assets. And that works out to be 702000 
All right, so that's our asset section of the balance sheet. All right, so over here now, I'm going to do the liability and stockholders equity section. All right, so we're going to start with our current liabilities, and we have a couple of those. So remember, we had accounts payable and wages payable. Accounts payable was 117, and the wages payable was 37. Let me just scroll up here a little bit so we can kind of see everything as best as possible. All right, and we see wages payable there is 37. All right, so that gives us our total current liabilities, and that works out to be 154. All right, the next step is to get our long-term liabilities or it might be called non-current, all right? The only one we have here is bonds payable, all right? So bonds payable, you can have premiums and discounts that go along with that, but we'll get to all that when we get to the bond chapter, all right? So that was 280,000. So that's gonna give us our total liabilities. So 280 plus 154 is 434. All right, so now we want, so let's just go back up here. So we Bonds payable, check. Wages payable, we've got that. Accounts payable. So our only accounts left now are common stock and retained earnings. And those are both equity accounts, so that's good because we're now ready to do the equity section of the uh, balance sheet. So stockholders equity section. All right, so we're going to have common stock and retained earnings. All right, so common stock is given as 200000 All right, but retained earnings was not given. All right, so when you see something like this, uh, you know, you, you, you're thinking to yourself, well, how do I come up with retained earnings? Is it missing? What's going on here? But remember, the accounting equation says that my total assets over here have to e equal my total liabilities and equity on, this, on the right side. All right, so think about that. So if we add these two together, we'll have total stockholders equity, all right, which will be some number here. And then under that, will have total liabilities and stockholders' equity. All right, so we know that this number has to be 702,000. All right, so if we, because it has to match up with the total assets, right? So don't forget, these two numbers right here have to equal, all right? So we know that that's 702, so now we can work backwards. So think about it, if this is total liability, we know liabilities are 434,000 from up here, all right, so 434 plus what gives me 702? Well, the answer to that is 268,000. All right, so that means my total stockholders' equity is 268, which means retained earnings has to be 68,000. All right, so this is just making sure you remember that the total assets equals total liabilities and total equity. At the same time, it's giving you an example of how to set up an asset, I mean, sorry, set up a balance sheet. Uh, and kind of incorporating accounts, make sure you don't include accounts you're not supposed to include. So there's any number of examples you can look at. You'll see a number in your homework. You'll probably have some on your test. All right, so it's just good to practice with these. So hopefully this is just another example that will help you as you're preparing for your test and, be, and working through your homework. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, after this one, we'll move on to another module uh, to start getting into some of these specific accounts. Uh, so we'll get going with that next time. Hope to see you then. Hopefully you're enjoying these. Please subscribe. I uh, enjoy uh, having you and look forward to having you next time.